for whatever reason, video games and movies don't play well together. Every so often, someone with dollar signs in their eyes will try to make a movie based on a video game franchise, only to run into the stigma that video game movies suck. <laughs> but why is this the case? It seems like it should be simple enough. For most video games, the story is laid out throughout hours of cutscenes and gameplay over multiple versions, giving a screenwriter tons of material to work with. Much of the time, the source material is rife with characters and intriguing story arcs practically begging for a full screen adaptation. Over the years though, many successful franchises have had their reputations ruined by truly awful movie adaptations. The film that seems to always come to mind is the 1993 adaptation of Super Mario Bros. Instead of sticking to a plot that closely resembles the source material, directors Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel decided to create a sci-fi film complete with a complicated narrative, terrible special effects even for 1993, and even disregarding the source material when it came to character design. Despite this, the film is a cult favourite for fans of the franchise, with Nintendo saying that, despite the film's poor quality, the fact that it was made shows how much the game had impacted popular culture. Then, there is the 2005 Alone in the Dark film, which is still considered to be one of the worst films ever made, let alone in terms of a video game adaptation. Managing to turn a decent horror game into a truly awful film, this is a huge disappointment for fans of the franchise. However, this wasn't always the case. According to Blair Erickson, the original script was much closer to the themes of the games, with HP Lovecraft stylings and the low-tech nature of the games. However, director Uwe Boll drastically changed the script. Erickson has gone on record to say that Bowe insisted on adding in horror movie cliches such as opening gateways to alternate dimensions, mad scientists, slimy dog monsters, and special army forces designed to battle said slimy dog monsters. The film ended up becoming a box office flop with a staggering 1% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. This isn't the last time that Bowe has directed a video game tie-in that was panned by critics and fans alike. He also directed two awful Blood Rain movies, another alone dark film, and the infamous Postal movie in which during its production, Bowl declared himself the only genius in the whole f***ing business. But why did these films end up becoming so bad, apart from Uwe Boll? Maybe it's because films and games work under different narrative structures. Most films tend to follow a three-act structure, whereas games don't fall into that. Trying to convert a non-linear narrative structure into a linear one doesn't translate well into that mould. It could also be down to the interactivity that comes with gaming being lost when making the jump to the big screen, resulting in a viewing experience that leaves the audience feeling no longer part of the action. Or it could simply be that they aren't really all that familiar with video games, including the people tasked with putting on the film. This ends up with filmmakers who don't really know how to adapt video games effectively. Even if they chose a good game with a good plot that's not too hard to adapt, they probably aren't going to understand just what ta it takes to make a video game so appealing to people anyway. But not all video game adaptations are awful. The animated movies tend to get a better response than their live action counterparts. This is due to the fact that animation is better suited to the often eccentric, strange and overall unrealistic kinds of stories and settings that the source material of the films have. Also the fact that animated movies are produced with similar methods to those used for video game cutscenes helps in that they can, at the very least, be visually faithful to the source material. Then there is the 2010 Prince of Persia adaptation. The film didn't have the greatest of reviews, with about one third of its reviews being positive, but it did well with both fans of the franchise and general moviegoers, grossing over $90 million. Why was this? It's simple. They didn't overcomplicate the plot, or try to add in new narrative threats that weren't around during the games. They simply took the best elements of its narrative and stylings and discarded the weaker elements. Then there was Edge of Tomorrow. Now this isn't a video game adaptation, but more of an homage to some of the most used gaming features that have been around for years. It may just have been another traditional sci-fi action film, but it received praise from critics for successfully translating video game features such as respawn points and trial and error gameplay into a film narrative. But there is a light on the horizon. Studios are starting to take a more serious look into video game adaptations. The next few years are full of films that have very interesting and deep narrative around them. There are adaptations for World of Warcraft, Assassin's Creed and Uncharted that have fans of their respective franchises being very excited for the future. There's even an Angry Birds movie coming soon, although that one is less for risk than the others. But there should be some trepidation for fans of any franchise that is being adapted for the big screen, 
based on the track record that video game adaptations have had in the past. Hopefully, studios, directors and screenwriters can get it right in the future and give these games and their fans the big screen treatment that has been long overdue. Only time will tell, but until the source material is truly utilised by filmmakers, expect to see these films in the bargain bin in the near future.